Hi, I'm Bob McNally, and I've got a couple of flounder that uh, we caught this morning, and uh, I'm going to show you a really easy way of how to scale them. I'm scaling them rather than filleting them because I'm going to turn them into butterfly uh, flounder and just open them up a little bit to put in uh, uh, crab meat stuffing. And uh, scaling them is very, very simple. Some people uh, use a spoon. I used to use a spoon, and there are special commercial scalers that you can buy. But I've been using a uh, just a, a, a wood handle wire brush. It's designed for paint, paint scraping, and it costs about a, you know two dollars. You can pick them up at any hardware store. And I like the wood handles because if you drop it overboard a marina like this, it's going to float. And uh, this will last you a long time. You can get two or three of them and leave them in various places where you're going to do your cleaning your fish. Let me show you how fast you can scale a flounder using this uh, just wire brush. I'll leave the head on when I'm doing this because it gives you kind of something to hand, hang on to. We'll cut the head and take out the entrails in just a little bit. But the, the scales tend to grow this way toward the tail. So if you make a strokes against the grain of the way the scales grow, just stroking toward the head of the fish from the tail with the using the entire part of the wire brush, it just gets those scales off unbelievably so. It really gets them. I mean this is virtually scaled right now. Just a few strokes and I'm not pressing hard. You got to make sure you get both sides of the fish. The white underside of a flounder has scales too. And this way when you cook them in the oven after they've been stuffed, there's no scales anywhere. And that's all it takes. They don't have very thick scales, but they are scales and they have to be removed after you've Knock the scales off. The one, I'm going to do one more flounder here. I just close off my cleaning area a little bit. Clean the flounder up a little bit. And we'll scale the second fish. Just like the first, grab it by the gill. Or something to hang on to, hold the fish, rub in a opposite way of the way the scales grow. Make sure you get along the dorsal area, up near the head, around the pectoral fin, along the bottom. Don't worry about cleaning it up yet because you're going to hose him off. Flip the fish over. Get the white underside, again making those same kind of strokes from the tail toward the head, which is against the grain the way the scales want to grow. And that's basically it. Both of these fish have been scaled in just a couple of minutes. Clean off your area and your fish. And that's it. Now I'm going to show you how we go about butterflying them for crab meat stuffing. You can, from the middle of the flounder, right behind the gill plate where the pectoral fin is, to the tail is where the backbone lays. All you do is, be, this is the same way you'd be doing them as if you're going to, to fillet them, how I fillet flounder. But because these fish are so perfect for one or two people, for a to stuff, I'm just going to start to fillet it like so. Again, leaving the head on because it gives me something to hold on to. We'll take care of the head and entrails in a little while. All we want to do is start that to fillet to start to come off like so. And just exposing it, we're just making a pocket for the crab meat stuffing. Do it on both sides, along that backbone, working your fillet knife right against the, the uh, bones that come off the backbone of the flounder fillet. And that's really all you have to do because the 
the crabby stuffing is going to it's going to open like so, and we're going to fill this with crab meat stuffing. Now at this point, I remove the head, like so. Two simple cuts. Discard the entrails. And we'll clean him up, and he's going to be great stuff, just like so. Let me show you one more time with this second fish. Leave the head on because it leaves you a handle. Make a cut down the center of the fish where the lateral line would be, just like you'd be filleting it. Careful to make a small cut against the rib bones, making that pocket, you know, just so it's kind of removed. Do it on one side, and then we do it on the other. Need a good sharp knife. Take your time, you don't want to leave any meat on there. And just make that pocket like so. That's all you're trying to do is open up this pocket. Remove the head. It's sort of a V cut. One's behind there. One's just below the pectoral fin. And that's it. These will clean up just great with a little hose and water. Not like so. No scales. A pocket for crab meat stuffing. And I'll show you how we're going to stuff these with crab meat in the kitchen in just a little bit. So we've come back into the kitchen with our uh, flounder we're getting ready to stuff them and I'm going to use a commercial type of stuffing. I got this at the fish market. Uh, it's, it's crab meat stuffing. It's not all that expensive. You can also make your own if you have uh, crab meat. You can just do regular bread stuffing and mix your own crab meat. Maybe a little bit of onion or celery in there. Just a light crab meat stuffing is what we're after. Uh, here's our flounder. I cleaned them all up uh, under running water and they're very pretty. They look just great. All ready to be stuffed. They've uh, been scaled. Ready to go to put in this crab meat stuffing. Uh, I, I cook with white wine a lot. I think it adds a lot of flavor. It also keeps things moist. So a little bit of white wine on the inside of them is I think a good thing. Uh, just any kind of a dry white uh, drinking wine is good. I believe this is a Chablis and that'll be fine. Now we're going to take our stuffing, crabby stuffing, uh, and this is great stuff because it's, it just comes in a loaf. It's pretty easy to handle and uh, you just kind of squeeze it out and stick it in there. Uh, I've got enough here for, certainly for two fish. Um, if you had a third or fourth flounder, maybe enough. But uh, gosh, the stuffing is just about as good as the as the fish itself. They both complement each other so nicely. But uh, you just put it in there and let it kind of butterfly up. And you you, know, you want to have plenty of stuffing that is going to satisfy each person that's that's for dinner. If it's just a couple of people, there's probably enough dressing here now. If it was three or four people for these two flounder. You may want to try to stick it all in there, but this will, this will be pretty good, just like it is. Now, uh, I put a little bit of seasonings on the outside. Uh, just season it to your own taste. Uh, I use Salad Supreme a lot, which is sort of a universal type seasoning, and I think half of it's because it's kind of pretty. It's uh, kind of a red color, and it is really a nice seasoning. It's made by McCormick's. I use it all the time. 
Uh, and then dill weed is about as good on fish as anything, so a little dill weed on there. I don't think you can have too much dill, frankly. Just sprinkle it on. Again, I season fish pretty heavily, but some people may not like it that way. Season it to your taste. And a little pepper. Um, I go light on salt because most seasonings have some amount of salt in them. Uh, and you can always salt it to, to taste. And there's probably some salt in that commercially prepared crab meat stuffing. So that's it. And I've got a preheated oven at 350 degrees. And uh, we're going to slide it in there for about 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, we'll take a, take a check about midway through. Because you certainly don't want to overcook this fish. Into the oven now. Alright, here's our preheated oven. It's 350 degrees. Uh, 325 would be good, kind of a slow oven. And uh, we just put it in there for 10 to 15 minutes. Check it periodically. Again, we don't want to overcook it. And we'll check it with a, a fork in just a little bit. Okay, it's been about uh, 12, 14 minutes. And I checked it one time to make sure it was doing well. It wasn't overcooking. This is looking good. Up here, give it a little. Give it the official fork test. The official fork test is always, oh yeah, it takes a fork real tender like that. That's going to be, I think, just perfect. Oh yeah, it's great. It's tender. It's not tough at all. Fork goes in nicely to the meat. Make sure you check the thickest part of the meat. Thickest part of the meat, which is up in here toward the shoulders. Yeah, it's great. See how that fish stuffing has just ballooned up and it looks great. Flounder, butterfly flounder, stuffed with crab meat. Very fast, very easy, and uh, what a great meal for, uh, for the fishing season.